Happy 4th of July, everyone. I'm Jaren Ugbanawag, and today we are talking about Indiana Jones and the Dial of Destiny. This fifth and final installment is co-written and directed by James Mangold as we follow the story of archaeologist Indiana Jones as he races against time to retrieve a legendary artifact that could change the course of history. Guys, it's been 15 years since we've gotten an Indiana Jones movie in theaters. Unlike a lot of critics who will talk about in their reviews about how they've grown up with this franchise and how Indiana Jones is one of the best movie characters in cinema, I unfortunately did not get into this franchise until I saw Kingdom of the Crystal Skull for the first time on DVD. Back in 2008, I expressed to my best friend Nohea that I knew nothing of Indiana Jones other than the ride at Disneyland, and so he was very excited to share the original trilogy with me, which I had a complete blast, and I can kind of say I'm a casual fan. Karen Allen, who plays Marion Ravenwood, has always been one of my favorite supporting characters who tags along on Indiana Jones' adventures, which is why Raiders is my personal favorite, and... It's also the reason why I have a soft spot for Crystal Skull. Now, over the years, I understood why fans despise the fourth entry. I just did not share the same criticism, the same hate as the fan base does. <laughs> now, one thing's for certain, though, and again, this is why I have a review channel. That's why I'm having to share my opinion. I think that Indiana Jones's best finale, best conclusion to his character was best left at The Last Crusade. James Mangold, whose writing and directing credit has stretched on from movies like Identity, Logan, and Ford vs. Ferrari, has definitely landed him to fill in the big shoes of Steven Spielberg. Now, what the radio silence did with the Scream franchise after Wes Craven is what James Mangold gets to do here with Doll of Destiny, and you really get to see a lot of the love for the franchise and a lot of attention to detail, whether that would be acknowledging the past as well as braving new horizons for our titular character to move forward. Harrison Ford is back as Indiana Jones for the fifth and final installment. It was pretty funny when Shia LaBeouf was making fun of him in the fourth entry if he was like 80 years old or something. And hearing that now in this movie, yeah, he is. I mean, he is not getting dragged to the ground by horses. He's not jumping from sky beam to sky beam. I mean, there's so much, there's so much this man could actually physically do, you know? The story does acknowledge his age as well as his mortality and I think the filmmakers did a really good job at keeping his limitations without pushing so much as the boundaries of superhero status, you know, like Fast and Furious. With that being said, the action scenes aren't at the same quality nor at the same spectacle as the original trilogy. I mean, every stunt that Harrison Ford was involved with, I was at the edge of my seat. I was gasping for air if this man was really going to be okay. The guy threw a punch, and it injured him, shutting down production for a month. The opening sequence kicked off with a bang, but I can only imagine a lot of people were only paying attention at picking apart the de-aged Harrison Ford. At face value, it looked okay, but when he started speaking, his lips, the expressions around his mouth did not match his voice. And I do have to say, I think um, the chase in Tangier was probably my biggest highlight and probably my favorite action scene of the entire film. And I think the big showdown at the end didn't really, didn't really happen. It kind of just fizzled out before it came to a close. We also got Phoebe Waller-Bridge, who plays Indy's goddaughter, Helena. Her motivations and partnership with Jones was just as wishy-washy as the dynamic between Tom Holland and Mark Wahlberg in Uncharted. Now, she's a great actress, but the way she was written really grazed at my nerves on the typical tropes, like no matter what kind of peril they were up against, she was always bringing up the money, and she was constantly bicker with Indy, just undermining him as the grumpy old man. I mean, he ain't Clint Eastwood. Don't get me wrong. Like, eventually she grows on you, but she was one hell of a chore. Mads Mikkelsen plays a sleek villain in my book at any day, any time, but I think here his motivations were pretty obvious and weren't necessarily realized till the third act. Um, 
I definitely wish we got a little more character development, and I think he needed a scar somewhere on his face or somewhere on his body because it was weird that he just kind of looked unscathed, considering that the prologue made it look like he died. <laughs> Also, another co-star that director James Mangold loves to work with is Boyd Holbrook, who plays the trigger-happy right-hand man to Mickelson, and I swear to you, he is the same exact character he was in Logan, just more suits and less mechanical parts. Antonio Banderas was apparently in this movie, and just like Uncharted, anybody could have done his part. He is given such a thankless role that no other star power would have changed it. And uh, Helena's right-hand partner, Teddy, made me miss Short Round so much, it was just a damn shame that the filmmakers couldn't get Ki Hui Kwan for one last adventure. Every third act in these movies have always had some kind of supernatural element that resulted in our plots MacGuffin being used. And with the fourth one being the most hated because of its plot reveal with the aliens, I personally felt that the third act of Dial of Destiny left me pretty empty. And that is because this particular plot device was done to death that I felt like it was obvious with the results it was just not meant to be part of the original final product. Even if I'm wrong, even if that was part of the plan, part of the final product, I felt like they really pulled the rug on the audience because they do this whole quick cut to black transition and now we're at the end of the movie. Speaking of the ending, I thought it was bittersweet. I was just hoping that the catharsis would have packed a little bit more of an emotional punch in the waterworks department. Overall, I thought this movie was way too long for its own good, but I'd be lying if I wasn't entertained by this always moving adventure. Um, was this fifth and final installment necessary just to write Mr. Jones another ending that wasn't Crystal Skull? No, I, I like all the endings. Especially when you include Last Crusade, Crystal Skull, and even this. It was bittersweet, but I I adore all the endings to these movies. Was it freaking awesome to see Harrison Ford whip the whip, put the hat back on, and go on another adventure as the role of Indiana Jones? Oh, you bet. But don't let my opinion, don't let anybody else's negative opinion change your mind in checking out this movie for yourself especially if you're a fan of this franchise to begin with. All right, guys, that's all I got to share about that movie. Go ahead and check it out if you want. I'm Jaren Ugbanawag. I hope you guys are enjoying your 4th of July weekend. Look forward to more reviews, and I will see you guys at the movies. Take care.